uh, today what we're going to do is set up for our Mandarin Chinese learning hour. The, the beginning also have to set that up. I'm surprised. <clears throat> so we, we got to do a lot of setup here for this week for all of the languages uh, that we're going to be uh, looking at. I'm still moving into the new office space. It's still not set up. As a matter of fact, I have to take everything down basically that I have. Luckily, I, I only put set up the main broadcasting equipment. Um, but I have to actually move this to another side of this office space. So, um, and then everything else is going to be coming in and, and be set up. So a lot of work still for me uh, this week. Plus we're doing other things with other, other spaces here. So uh, a lot of work. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, look into our uh, Mandarin Chinese, what our re resources are going to be. Something that any one of you could do on your own uh, for any language, actually. So basically, as I explained before in my other uh, uh, introductory videos, uh, it's just simply keeping your minds busy and uh, learning things. And one of the good things to learn also is communicate in different languages. Uh, one of those things is computer language, by the way, um, which I should have also added. But uh, since we do some of it through our different uh, marketing programs and also the game that we're developing, um, I guess we, 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 we're squeezing that in anyway with our other activities. But you can basically use any of your strengths and interest areas to you know, bring in a new language or a language maybe you're somewhat familiar with, but not uh, not too much, and begin to, you know, develop more, uh, more ability, uh, skill in that language. And by uh, incorporating your passions and your strengths and just um, adding that language to it, and since you're already motivated with your passion and your strength and you have some knowledge, some background knowledge to, and I know you simply is adding just the word in that new language to, to say this or to say that or stuff like that. It makes it easier for you to pick up new languages, uh, especially as an adult. Usually as an adult is harder, you know, it's easier for kids to be exposed to different languages um, and for them to master them. But it's also uh, easier, in a sense, <laughs> for an adult to do it because the adult has something that the kid doesn't have. What is that? Experience. <laughs> you have experience, you have knowledge, you have passion. Uh, for certain things, and so that makes it easier then to just to use that strength and compensate for the loss of cognitive uh, agility that a young person would have, right? So that's a compensatory thing. They cannot have what you have. So as an older person, and I recommend this also for people who are trying to prevent dementia and other cognitive uh, cognitive degradation, um, type of uh, situations or elements to do this. Uh, you have compensation for the fact that to compete, in other words, to with a child being able to pick up a language because you have experiences that simply you need to attach a uh, that new language to. Simple. Uh, a child doesn't have that. It's forming it as, as they progress through their day and their exposure, their, their new experiences they have, which attach to the new language, right? But the, um, the old fart, <laughs> y'all, y'all can, uh, can also compensate and have, uh, have that language attach to, um, you know, skills and experiences and passions that you have 
uh, as an adult. So I think it's, it, it, it compensates so you can do accomplish the same thing. Now, and because you're doing the activity day to day, like for example, I learn computer languages because I work in it every day. So every day I'm doing something. And I get to practice implementing that computer verbiage for coding, right? So it then it stays with you. So that's the same thing with what language is. So as long as you, as long as you have activity so for it to stick, then that's what, all you need. All right. So um, we're looking at the... Uh, in, in the way we're going to handle, if you haven't heard my previous broadcast on the polyglot, we're going to use Bible where we can, which is mostly we can, and it's something that I know, so that I will use Bible as one of my, uh, my, one of my uh, skill sets or knowledge bases to attach a new language to. And so I'm looking to see uh, what uh, resources uh, we can have. And uh, so let, let me just show you all that process. So again, this is just a process that we're going to use or we're looking for uh, resources to facilitate our learning of uh, today, uh, today's language with be Mandarin Chinese. <clears throat> Let me see, make sure that's right. Yeah, that's... yeah, today is Mandarin Chinese Day. All right, so uh, what I did was to go to our Bible Gateway, which is what I use uh, basically for all my Bible uh, type broadcasts. And I know they have the Spanish version of the Bible here. It's already here. As you see, the Reina Valera, they have a few versions I use. The 1960 Reina Valera, which is the it's comparable to the King James in Spanish. Comparable, it's not the same, not not at all, but it is it is basically the Spanish pe people's version of, uh, you know, has the same, more or less the same uh, weight or or uh, respect as the King James does for the English. Um, and again, there's other versions in Spanish, as you can see here, and updates to that one. So what I'm going to look for in this list, I don't know if they have it or not, I'm, I'm looking for um, Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, if they would happen to have it. So I guess I should look at, the, at an earlier... Uh, it's alphabetical order to see if they have it. Now, they have the Chi Nan Teco, whatever that is, which is not Chinese. So, it looks like they may not have a Chinese language version here. And so, let's look for Mandarin and M. See if it's if they have it under M for any. No, no, they no, you don't see it. They have Japanese though. Japanese is here. The Japanese Living Bible. Korean Living Bible is here. Do you see that? Uh, we have some other M's here. Macedonia, Malati Bible, Mam. No, no, you just can't get that Mandarin, my goodness. We have Polsky, we want to learn Polish. Portuguese, so we have that. That would be good for our Portuguese uh, language day, which we also have. We have the Russian uh, translation, so that's good for our Ruski day, Ruski. When we're learning Ruski. And uh, they got Tagalog for those of you who are interested in Tagalog. 
Ah, we have the Chinese now. Here we have Chinese under Z, Z H here. Now, I don't know if any of these would be Mandarin in particular. Uh, so what we should do is we should take a do some research and find. Uh, let me find directly Mandarin Chinese Bible version. And let's do a search for that. And let's see, and this is Wikipedia, let's see if they have it listed, one of the names. Yeah, let's see if they have a listing. Um, oh, they have under Mandarin Chinese, they have these. So, it would be safe to assume that if we find one of these versions on the uh, Bible Gateway listing on the Chinese, that it would be Mandarin, right? Because it says Northern Mandarin. No, now we have to worry about Southern Mandarin. Oh, my goodness. But it looks like they don't have much. Most of it is the Northern Mandarin. I guess the North one over there also. Okay, those who are American laughed at that. All right, so... um. Let's check. Let's see the versions, the Mandarin or the Chinese versions here. So uh, it's going to be, I guess we can take this out, put it like that. We have that, like that, and then do the. All right. Uh, this is just so that we can get a side by side view. I use my uh, tiler, handy, handy stuff. Okay, so let's try to find the Chinese version. Chinese Contemporary Bible Simplified. It says, oh, we can look just look at Chinese Union Version. Is that here? Here you have the Chinese Union Version right here. So we do have the Union version. Uh, we have, let's see what else we have here. You, United Bible Societies, is that a version? Not that I see there. A Studium Biblicum version. Uh, no, 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 no. You know, some of these may be. But is this a basically Chinese Union version, which is there? So yeah, the Chinese Union version is here. So we verified that. Uh, today's Chinese version. Uh, which we don't like see it as today's Chinese version. So we just have to say that. So I missed new Chinese version. Chinese new version could be that one. They have the Chinese Living Bible. So it looks like we have two out of these. Pastoral Bible we know is not there. New World Translation, that is, you know who? That's not there. Chinese Standard Bible, let's see. Chinese Standard Bible. Yes, that is also here. So we have three of the versions here so far. Chinese Net a Bible, that's not here. Chinese New Living Translation, that's not here. And and that's it. So we have about three versions. Um, I'm t I'm going to, I guess, look at the um, uh, the first one we found. I guess the Chinese. Uh, uh, what was the first one we found here? The Chinese Union Version. Chinese Union Version is the predominant translation of Bible into Chinese used by Chinese Protestants. First published in 1919. The text is now available online. So that's the first one we did find. 
uh, new Chinese version that we find now. I'll just read that. They say Chinese uh, has a Bible translation that was completed by Worldwide Bible Society and Lacking Foundation, formerly known as the New Chinese Version of the English name. Okay, so that's that. And we did find the Chinese Standard Bible, which is a Chinese New Testament. It's only New Testament translation, so that would not be suitable for us, by the way. Yeah, uh, produced by the Global Bible Initiative and Holman Bible. It would have been nice, but it's not suitable for us because we want to start it with Genesis 1. So we need the complete Bible. So, so far, uh, we only have then uh, the Chinese Union, Chinese Union Bible. So let's just use that. Chinese Union Bible, Union Version. This the simplified, this the traditional simplified. Should we have the simplified? Let's do the traditional. And let's go to Genesis. Well, and here we go. Now we can get started. Now that's all we need. <laughs> okay. So here you go. What else do you need? Can can what else do you need? It's all right here. You see that? As simple as it can be. And all you have to do is read this. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read that? Because I can't. All right. So here we go. So we got, at least we have, our, and I'm going to start making some notes so that we can keep track of all this stuff that we discover. So Mandarin Chinese. We're going to be on until 7, uh, 15, I think uh, we started around 6.15 or so, we'll see. Uh, we'll just be on for an hour. We, we're 15 minutes into it only, so 17, so uh, we got another hour and, uh, no, we got another uh, 40 minutes or so. Mandarin Chinese, polyg polyglot show, polyglot, so... Uh, we're going to have the Bible Gateway for and the Chinese Union Bible, uh, Union Version, I should say. And so that's going to be one of our resources for sure. And uh, what I'm going to look for is... Uh, some basic, uh, basic, basic uh, Mandarin uh, or uh, basic Mandarin. So uh, let's just see what resources we could find. Ni Yao, Ni Hao, Ni Hao. Hello, thank you, is Shay. She, 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 she. Hey, you can learn this in Google. See that? She, she. You're welcome. Book, buku, lechi, book, Oh, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you know you were speaking Mandarin when you tell your little kid, oh, it's a boo, boo? See that? That's as simple as that. You were speaking Chinese already. Ooh, this is too much. Boo boo. It's a boo boo, of course. Oh, you got a boo boo. See how easy that was? You've been speaking Chinese all along. Oh my. You guys been speaking Chinese all this time. You didn't even know it. All right, I'm on the chat. Anybody wants to say hello in Chinese, please. Mandarin Chinese only. Thank you. 
<laughs> Mandarin Chinese only, please. You can say hello, which is ni hao, ni hao, and that's how you spell it. Let's blow it up here. Can we blow it up any further? Yeah, ni hao. Okay, basic Mandarin. Ni hao. Let me close that layout and get over there. Ni hao. Say hello. Thank you, Xi Xi. You're welcome, Boo Koo Chi. Is that nice, Boo Koo Chi? You're welcome. Good morning, Zhao. And good night, Wan on. Wan on. Wan on. And Wo Jiao. Gilberto Rosado. Wo Xiao Gilberto Rosado. My friend's name is Wo de Pengio Xiao. Wo de Pengio Xiao. Yeah, there's more items here. These are travel trips from travel and leisure. Yeah, you're going to China, you got to learn these things. Now, this is a fa the safe way to do Chinese right now because going over there you can get sick. Okay. Basic, basic. Uh, okay, basic Mandarin Chinese words and phrases. Ni hao, wen ji shi, bu ku chi, zao, wan an, wu xiao. My name is Wu Xiao. Uh, Wu Xiao Gilberto Rosado. My friend uh, Wu De Peng Yo Xiao. Or Wa Da Peng Jo Yao. Wa Da. Oh, that's the, that's I'm saying De. That's De. That's Wa Wa Da. Wa Da. Peng Yao. Jiao. Peng Yo Jiao. Wu da pong yo jiao. Jesus Christ. Huh? Wo, wu, wu, or wa, wa da pong yo jiao, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> okay. Useful Mandarin Chinese phrases for travelers. Where's the bathroom? That'll help, right? Yeah, you got to get to that bathroom, boy. So it's Si Sao Jiang Jai Nali. Si. So that XI is like Si Sao. Si Sao Jiang Zai Nali. So it's basically ignoring most of these letters here. <laughs> so don't let the letters frighten you. Most of it just discard it. She she sao jiang zai nali. Let me try this one. Uh, do shao. See? Tai gui. Tai tai gui la. Too expensive. Oh, oh, Thai Guayla. You gotta say also with that emphasis, Thai Guayla. Oh, ah, Pianji Dian, Pianji Yi Dian, Pianji Yi Dian, Pianji Yi Dian, make it cheaper. Pianji Yi Dian, you idiot. Pianji Yi Dian. Not that this is going to help you read anything in Chinese, but anyway, this is just a start. Hem Piao Liang. I can read as long as, as, long as they, they spell it out like this, I can read it. I don't need the uh, phonetics here, basically. I'm doing pretty good, right, without the phonetics. Hem Piao Liang. 
Oh yeah, very beautiful. Oh, Han Piao Liang. Han Piao Liang. You're screaming at the mountaintops. And they all love you. And they're all dying of virus now. Han Han Piao Liang. Oh, delicious. How chi. How chi. Oh man. How she, hen how she, or oh, hen is very. They use that before here, isn't it? Hen is hen is very, oh very beautiful. That's why, yeah. Hen is very. Hen, hen is very. Hen, hen is very. Hen she. No, how she, and then it's hen, how she, delicious, how she, hen, how she, how she. My dan, my dan, I'm not using the phonetics, uh, by the way, you, you, you know, I know you see the phonetics, but I'm not looking at it, I'm just trying to pronounce what I read, the first the first part here, I'm ignoring the phonetics, and I'm only checking the phonetics after I've said it. So it's, it's pretty much on, on spot. I'm pretty good at that. But, uh, you know, that's not how you write the Chinese. We know that, right? So it's a shame that we're, they're not all using uh, Greco-Roman letters. Or, but in any case, my dad... <laughs> I I I don't understand. Wu wa wa bu dong. See, wa bu dong. I remember that wa from uh, this first one here, right? The wa from over here. Wa. See the W O with the uh, the little U above it is wa. Wa you wa. Okay, okay. So it's wa. Wow, boo dong. Good phrase to remember. You likely need it. I don't understand. I, I don't know. Wow, wa boo dong, Mandarin. Wa boo dong, Mandarin. Wa boo dong, Chinese. Wa boo dong. Do, yeah, wa boo dong. You might as well be here. Wa, do I grab by you, boo dong. You, boo dong. We got to use that in the apologetics videos I do. You boo dong. Okay? You can use that with your kids. They don't understand something. You say you boo dong. Okay? You boo dong. Right? And you remember, yes, remember like words like dodo bird and say so you dodo, you boo dodo, you boo dong. Mmm. You boo dong, no capiche. That's, that's Italian. Eh? No capiche. You boo dong, Mandarin Chinese. You can impress a lot of people with all the languages you know. <laughs> you boo dong. Okay, that's it. And let's go. Wu. This will be woman, right? Woman, right? Like it says here, woman. Woman, zhao ba, zhao, zhao ba. Let's go. Woman, zhao ba. So these are phrases you can see here. This is a site. This is called Travel and Leisure. Here you go. They put their own little ad up there for you. Travel and Leisure and... Uh, Travel tips is the subsection category, yes. And then it has basic Mandarin Chinese words and phrases. And uh, we're doing Mandarin Chinese today. Uh, as, as you see here, I mean, just as an introduction, we're still looking for resources for our regular polyglot show where we'll, we'll, we'll try to get more into the Mandarin. The problem here... Is that Mandarin Chinese? These these are speaking Mandarin, and uh, what we also want to do is to be able to read it a little bit and get into some reading 
which we want to do with the Bible as our reference because that's my strong area, my strong suit. But in any case, uh, I guess familiarizing ourselves a little bit with some of the words, how they sound, and then we're going to find some resources and uh, being able to read the, the graphic uh, language, which is the Chinese language. Um, also, so uh, just to give us some some background, yes is she. Oh, hey, everyone knows that. Yeah, bullshit. That's bullshit. And then you say no, simply you can you tell people bullshit, bullshit. This is easy stuff. You guys should know this. You guys. <laughs> You guys say everything's BS anyway. I mean, you might as well learn a little like bullshit. That's bullshit, okay? That's it. No. Bullshit, okay? Bullshit. That's it. Now you can honestly look at your wife and she's telling you to t take out the trash and you can say bullshit. Okay? That's it. Okay? And so... You can laugh at okay, dear. I'm just learning my Mandarin Chinese. That's all. Okay, that's bullshit. All right, here we go. Bullshit. All right, you got me. You understand? So bullshit. That's it. That's it. So now you know how to say no in Chinese. Bullshit. All right. Okay, that's a that's a lot of bullshit right there. I know you guys are going to use this. Like, this is easy. I mean, even your kids can learn that one real quick. Just bullshit. So, oh, what you said? Oh, I'm saying no. No in Mandarin Chinese. That's it right now. What, don't you know Mandarin? Don't you know any Mandarin Chinese? So that's all you're doing. Bullshit. All right. Now, how is how good? No, good is how. How. And bad is boo how. That's not. I guess bad means not good, right? Because it says boo how. For bad, it has the how. So, and how, it means good. So, if that's good, then this must be not good, right? Boo. Now, is there anything else we use boo here? So boo would be not. Um, let's say, uh, uh, let's change too expensive to not too expensive. And so we will say boo, boo tai gualu. Or try guai la. Oh, boo, boo. Uh, boo tai guai la. Oh, it's a good price. Uh, boo, boo tai guai la. It's not too expensive. Boo. Boo tai, boo tai guai la. It's not that expensive. Now, if it was, it's tai guai la. Tai guai la is expensive. It's an expensive thing. Now, that, that thing is expensive that coat you see there on the screen it's tai guela tai guela no and the other one oh it's bu 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 twai bu twai guela that's what you have there so bu is not see that bu how today is zin tian Zin Tian is today. Zin Tian. Zin Tian Bu Tai Gui La. Okay. How? Um, Hen Hao. Hen Hao. Very good. Zin Tian. Zin Tian Hen Hao. Bu Tai Gui La. Not too expensive today. This is the day. Not too expensive today. Very good. This is very good. Okay. Han. Ah. Okay. 
Um, so that's very good. It is not too expensive, right? Boo, not boo. Tuai Guela, not too expensive. Uh, Zing Tiang today. Okay, Zing Tiang now. Uh, Zhu Tuan, Zhu Tiang. Yes, a Zhu Tiang Tuai Guela. Too expensive, Zhu Tiang. Zhu Tiang, too expensive. Tai Guela. Zing Tiang, Bu Tuai Guela. Okay, am I making sense? Anybody know Chinese out there? Tell me what's going on. Okay, and then tomorrow, Ming Tiang. So here we got the three uh, times for today, Zing Tiang, tomorrow, Ming Tiang, and yesterday was Zua, was Zua Tua Tiang. So here we have three, three of these words here. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. And then goodbye, Zai Zai Zian. Z Zai Zian. Goodbye. So next time you go to the Chinese restaurant, you can try these out. Just try these out. Say goodbye. Zai Zian. Uh, you know, you got to try one word at a time. And when you're dealing with the Chinese restaurant. And uh, make sure you're ready to run out the restaurant before the egg, the egg roll hits your head. Okay. Bu hao. Yeah, that would be the bad one. Bu hao. Bu hao. Just make sure you say very good. Very tasty is, um, let's say, uh, where is that tasty? It wasn't tasty. No. It was uh, how beautiful. A ham piao liang. Ham piao liang. Right? Oh, very beautiful. Ham piao liang. Ham piao liang. Okay. If you're trying to impress a lady, it says here. You can tell her, Ni Hen Piao, Ni Hen Piao Liao. Uh, we make no promises about the outcome. <laughs> ni Hen. Then it must be Ni must be you. Ni must be you. Right? So let's check that out in Google Translator. Google Translator. How about Google Spelling? Google Translator. And uh, let's just go there. Translate English to Mandarin. Okay, and then here we're gonna say you and it's ni right so exactly right so I'm right ni is you so you hen piao lang you are beautiful no hang is very ni 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 Hen piao liang. Ni hen piao liang. Okay. You are very uh, beautiful, was it? Hen piao liang. Very beautiful, yes. So you are very beautiful. Ni, because it didn't give us the ni, that you. But we looked it up and we know that you is ni. So it's ni. Ni hiao piao liang. Hen piao liang. Yeah. Okay, so you are very beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you, me is what again? They have the thank you here. Where is that? Thank you was up in the top here. Ah, she, 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 of course. She, 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 thank you. She, she, thank you. Ni, ni, hen piao liang. She, 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 she. So, ni, ni, 
Woo. Me, Hen P.L. Young, Shishi, thank you. Uh, what else is here? You got your Niha, you're welcome. Oh, and Bukuchi. Oh, Bukuchi. How can we forget that? Thank you, it's Bukuchi. Ni, Hen Piao Leung, Bukuchi. Bukuchi. And you can say, um, Shishi. Shishi. And Bukuchi. Bukuchi is, you're welcome. And Shishi, thank you. Thank you. And then you say Bukuchi. Okay, so right now we're having a wonderful conversation in Mandarin Chinese. And this is just the first evening of our polyglot uh, in Mandarin Chinese. Buku Chi, Buku Chi, Shi Shi, Ni Hem Piao Liang. So we should always come back to these as a, as a, as we, um, get more into it. Now, uh, let's look for a resource for reading, reading Mandarin. And, um, and uh, let's see what we can find here. How to read Mandarin. These are, there's some videos. I don't want to just just look at the videos. I'll do that on my own and then bring you some. Did they change the way uh, Google is showing up results? It looks like. They have itch. This is this. This is. I think it's. Let me see. These are restaurants here. Mandarin Companion here, some type of website. How to read Chinese? Let's read this because this will give us uh, this will give us a little uh, more in depth understanding of what I already know. Okay, so the, but you can, guys can see it for yourself. Okay. You may not be aware of it, but we read more than we realize. When we see text in our mother tongue, we mentally acknowledge it in our heads. An advertisement. And there it goes. Right there when I hit the word advertisement, I, it, picks, it pops into here. Oh, well, let me give this guy anyway credit. This is in digmandering.com. Uh, so obviously they're advertising a, a video course, uh, the complete Chinese grammar course, 128 video lessons, 16 plus hours in total to cover HSK, all one through six levels, 163 grammar points illustration. Uh, and so they're offering that course there. Are any of you interested in learning more about Mandarin Chinese or grammar if you're at that level, because I am not at any level to have any mental capacity in, in, in terms of the law to make a decision on what type of course I should take in Chinese. So I'm really just, I am what you call a, 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 um, a fetus in Mandarin. So I'm really not legally allowed. To purchase any courses right now. Okay, so um, where we were with the advertisement, right? When I read that, that's when the advertisement popped up. So you know, we uh, uh, we gave the website its plot. Now, the name of a business, the name of a street, we already know, and then dismiss it for its lack of relevance to that moment. For example, whose first language is an alphabet-based language? Learning to read. If for people whose first language is an alphabet-based language, which is us, learning to read Mandarin presents a unique challenge. See, that's a unique challenge. So we're starting off with our unique challenges on the Monday of every week. That's what we'll be doing here. And there are no visual clues 
to the pronunciation of a character. Da da. Get the point? See what I see? <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. All right. So we see. Now you, you begin to understand. The think about this. I, 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 today is my viral political Monday. Usually I, I talk politics today. Since we're still moving and getting things set up, I didn't do my, my political show today. But it looks we'll we'll talk a little pol politics right now with um, the difference between the East and the West, and you can see right off the bat, you know, when we're dealing with like Trump and the uh, China trade deal, you know, the way China looks at us is probably the same way we look at what we're seeing now on the screen. You know, it's like <clears throat> we can join together conceptually. But there is a big difference, isn't there? I mean, you got to realize that the Chinese children know this stuff. <laughs> the little kitties in China know how to read that. And we here in America, we consider ourselves so advanced, so technologically advanced, and so far and above. You know, this is Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is the thing, you know. You guys gotta understand when you're dealing when we are looking at politics and I'm talking about foreign affairs in particular, that you know, we're dealing with people at a total totally different level and it's not a cognitive level. We're not talking about cognitive level, we're talking about a culturally and linguistically. Uh, you know, the, and the way they they view information, you have to also understand something that their basis for acknowledging truth, what is true, is also based on on these things because they acknowledge truth, you know, with reading and they associate reading with education. So and then education, well, you know the truth, you know, you're learning about truths and, and how the world works and all that but you're reading it like this this is how you're 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 receiving this information right over there see that so that's the way you're bringing it in so it, it, it comes to a, a, a probably a very distinct view and to some level to some degree i may be mistaken or um you know somebody with a more in-depth um, uh, studies in linguistics and in and this phenomena may speak more to address this issue, but as far as I I, I uh, can tell, uh, they the this simple difference uh, creates a disparity in perspective, <clears throat> and obviously would create some distrust. I mean, how can you trust? How can an American trust anyone who can read this? Yes, and that <laughs> who actually reads this and writes this on a daily basis and communicates and interacts with the world in this fashion. How can an American trust a person? You know, and then this person wants us brings us a piece of paper. Here, here's the contract. You know. And then uh, says, uh, ben, uh, then says, um, uh, Hen Hao. Hen Hao. You know, this is good. Hen Hao. Okay. Uh, how, how do you, you, know, you understand? So you see, so that's a great dispar disparity. So, you know, it's it just interesting how you have this trade war with China. We just got through a great big deal that Trump wrestled out of them, uh, for better or for worse. You know, people criticize Trump for better or for worse, but the guy did make the, the biggest deal that the U.S. has ever had, ever with China. And uh, but you you have to you have to realize that at the, a lot of this. I, I won't call it animosity, but I guess the estrangement 
the degrees of separation uh, between the Chinese mindset and the Western mindset, which is, you know, basically the American mindset, I guess, to its nth degree, is quite distinct. Uh, and uh, but concepts are concepts, so concepts are, are almost universal. But I, I think that what composes our development and our mental and psychological makeup has a lot to do with the way we interact with the uh, with knowledge, right? With our environment, and this is very distinctful manners. As all I, I, I can tell is that the Chinese alphabet, like the Hebrew alphabet, is pictorial. So, and the, the, a lot of the Asian alphabets are that way. Korean is another. Uh, I don't know if the Japanese, I, I, I would assume yes, that the Japanese alphabet is also pictorial in nature. You know, some more or less to whatever degree. But the, definitely Korean is very pictorial. Uh, and obviously the Chinese here. And uh, it's just interesting. I'm sure that throughout this uh, this exercise that we're doing in the different languages, we're going to be able to develop some interesting, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, observations. Uh, and uh, uh, it might be very interesting. At least to me it is. Anyway, so the question is uh, seeing in these pictures what the meanings are and how to read, actually how to read this, this thing. Knowing that what, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, I mean, where is the heavens and the earth here? In the beginning, it should be this. This should be in the beginning should be but you got to see all this stuff written here for in the beginning all the all this the painting the drawing how would this be what in here actually says beginning what what graphically so this is what's interesting about this you know in the beginning there's a comma here then god created the heavens and the earth assuming that it's being read this way Maybe it's read the other way, like in Hebrew. So this is another thing we got to learn, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll slowly get there uh, indeed. So uh, this is very good. So there are no visual clues to the pronunciation of a character, so memorization is a large part of the reading process. So here we go. Memorization is a large part of the reading process. If you know anything about educational science or educational psychology, um, you know that memorization is a low form of uh, learning, okay? Uh, memorization, I, I believe, is the lowest form of learning. So, you know, I, you're not really learning when you're memorizing. You're simply memorizing, and it becomes a function of memory rather than of understanding. So again, you know, these people have to uh, people have to understand these things. These are basic concepts in education. Whenever you have something that is memorizable or a tradition that is based on memorizing this and that, you're dealing with basic education. Uh, these are things like for kids, you know, and learning new things. And it's, I think the. To, the greatest time, the greatest time that as human beings we relied on memorization was during elementary school when you were learning your multiplication tables, right? So the, that's a common form of learning the multiplication tables is to learn through memorization. You know, one times one is one, one times two is two, you know. And, and you see the kids mostly memorizing instead of like comprehending the math. They're, they're too young to start comprehending the language of math. So, so what happens is that we begin to memorize things as a way to, so to speak, learn them. We're, we're not really learning them, but we're committing these set rules since they don't change. 
into memory so that when we see it again in a test, we remember that, you know, 3 times 6 equals 18. And we don't have to think much. We're not thinking mathematically at all. We're just depending on memory. Okay, so that's what memory does. You don't think with memory. You just recall. Memory is just recalling. It's not thinking. Okay, that's why when you get higher up in your in your grades and in the higher education, um, you are supposed to learn how to think. Although many people they get they get their master's degrees based on memorization. They, they <laughs> they're busy memorizing. They, you know, some of them say, "What are you talking about? I memorized my way up to a master's degree." I'm sure you can. Unfortunately, but that's the way things are. You got to understand, if you're forced to be memorizing things, you're really, I, I would tell you that you're, whoever's educating you is not really doing you a service. Uh, memorization is something, uh, even, and even in the highest levels of, uh, you know, even for a doctorate degree, there's a lot of things that, are, that come through that were memorized. So a lot of times memorization is utilized um, uh, and things are memorized uh, for the sake of, uh, uh, in some cases, passing exams, especially at the master's degree level. Um, a lot of things have to be committed to memory dates, you know, people, stuff like that, because they're forcing you to learn. You know, we, we cannot give a degree to anyone who hasn't learned. Uh, Ni Hao, we're learning Mandarin Chinese. I'm talking about uh, something related right now. Um, uh, we have to understand that when uh, they're forcing you to learn the dates, places, you know, like history, it's a lot of memorization in history because history, obviously, is not something that you have to understand. Uh, the whole point of history is really um, is remembering dates, places, and, uh, and people. Uh, and so there's a lot, a lot of that incorporated in most of the sciences and most of the things you get a degree or, or a higher degree. Uh, that's, uh, some, uh, that's enough of memorization. But it's, it's, I think it's relied upon too much. You know, it's like, it's like you're getting a doctor's degree based on uh, you know, like, what, 30% of memorized uh, material? I mean, what's the point? Uh, it's not thinking. It's not reasoning. It's just, you know, awarding you for your uh, memorization skills. And that's kindergarten stuff. So it's almost like, you know, it's like a joke. But I get it. You know, you have to show you, you know your stuff. You know who invented this, who who was the one who created that, and who brought this into play in, in your own industry. How can you be an expert in your field and you don't know who started the darn thing, right? So I, I get that. It's understood. But I think a lot of uh, students get stuck with this memorization bit, and it's really a lower form of education. The lowest. It's the first rung. The ladder of education is very high, and it has quite a few rungs on it. And the lowest one is memorization, it's kindergarten stuff. But yet we see that in Mandarin Chinese, I'm not that I'm not making this uh, making Mandarin seem to be a kindergarten language or implying that the cognitive ability of the Chinese people is low. I'm just making a statement uh, based on the facts as we know it. Uh, that if the language is based on memorization in terms of reading. Um, then uh, we're talking about a very simplistic uh, acquisition of knowledge here. Now, it could be a progress, though. It's almost like, like the chopsticks. But this is a very interesting correlation. You have the chopsticks and you have the fork. Now, for the Chinese, uh, they had the fork before. I think they may have invented it. <laughs> so they invented the fork, and then let's give it to them. And then they gave up the fork because they advanced. It says that they advanced 
into using chopsticks. It was more efficient. It's more advanced in their in their view. I'm gonna have to question that. You know what we're going to look at? I'm going to look at the, the development of the Chinese language and the reading and writing of it um, to make certain correlation. It'll be interesting to see because if I note. <laughs> And maybe someone of you out there may know this. If you can know if the transfer to chopsticks from the fork correlates in any way with the further development of the written Chinese language, you know, its, it's, its fullness and grasp in society. It would be interesting because if they, if they went to the so-called... Uh, more advanced, which I would say is more simplistic, uh, utensil, at the time where their memorization uh, and their Chinese reading skills were at its high point or developing to be its high point, I would have to say that it's uh, that correlation would be something to be uh, looked into. It's something to look for right now. Uh, to really, you know, and in my opinion, that if there is some correlation to that, I would not say that the use of the chopsticks is advanced. If anything, it would be evidence where the simpl uh, the simplicity or the dumbing down, if you will, of the cognitive process um, is something that affected in, in the Chinese. It manifested itself in the use of chopsticks. And uh, we here in the United States are, uh, are uh, in the process of dumbing down, or we, we have gone down substantially already and are continuing to do so. So it'll be interesting to see what other things we get rid of that are too, we feel too complicated and want to advance into more simplicity. And is more simple really more better? Uh, in, 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 in the sense of cognitive development, cognitive process, uh, growth, you know, and um, development of the race and uh, or even of a culture, is it better? It, does it improve or does it simply dumb down the masses and uh, make us maybe the dictate, dictatorial style uh, p political appetite in China is a reflection of this simplistic um, uh, dumbing down of the masses. And then obviously when you have masses uh, that are dumbed down, you need dictatorship. You need strong leaders, a monarchy uh, or a dictatorship in order to have uh, rule, uh, rule, uh, law and order in, in a country. Basically, it's what's needed. Um, so whenever you have a dumbing down, or or you don't, you just don't have uh, the nation or society advanced enough. You you tend to have the monarchy and the um, or the dictators, a modern form of uh, monarchies, in, in control. Um, and so that's what you see. So it'll be interesting. I'm just saying it would be very interesting to see if there's some correlation to that. Uh, looking at the development of China and see how much of the development of its of its um, written language dictates or is in correlation with the. Uh, maintenance or the development and maintenance of the Chinese uh, nation under a monarch or dictatorial type of situation. I think it would be very interesting to note uh, that. Okay, because, it, you know, they say it's an advance. For not, you know, China, if it was advanced, if China was making such great advancements, they would be far ahead of the rest of the world. Uh, they're just now trying to move on ahead. They're trying, but most of their things are, have been really things that are, have been taken, uh, as far as I can see, from the U.S. They are, they've made improvements on things or they have not been regulated. The problem is that the U.S. has been so overly regulated 
throughout these past few decades, then yeah, that China without these similar regulations has always has been able to advance. But I don't think they would have been able to if Americans were let go to their ingenuity and uh, and and you know do things, and we would be uh, still in greatly advanced today. Mind you, with with other issues and accidents having happened and stuff, that is sure. That's the sure thing. We we've been trying to do things without having too much of an impact on the environment, negative impact, and things like that. Uh, but while we've been taking care, others haven't, and they've been progressing. They've been catching up to us, and now they're trying to uh, surpass us. But the problem is they don't have those regulations. They don't have those those precautions in place, and big problems will ensue in the future. This is one of the byproducts. So everybody else is glorifying the external politics of these people doing it right, Germany, Iran, Russia, whatever. They these guys got it right, and U.S. has got it wrong and all that. But you know you're gonna see. You already have Chernobyl. It's just a warning sign. Chernobyl was just a warning sign. When you when these countries trying to catch up to the U.S., trying to surpass the U.S., they're going to do what the U.S. was not. Uh, willing to do or able to do because of the precautions for the environment and things that we have sense enough to consider and we have a lot of people who support that. But in these other countries, they have no voice. Your people, type of people like you all that want to protest and protect the little animals, and isn't it? they don't have that in those countries. They, these guys do what they do. They're experimenting what they want to do and they are pulling ahead at the cost of the rest of us, because you know the damage they do will impact the rest of the world. Anyway, I, I didn't want to turn this into a political uh, commentary, but the language issue is very important, and I think it affects a lot of what we're talking about. But anyway, so it says, thus knowing more characters is ultimately the key to reaching the point of seeing, processing, and then deciding its relative value in a split second like we do our first languages. In other words, it could be argued that Mandarin is one of the most expressively visual languages. Why did I have to pick this? Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, Mandarin is one of the most expressively visual languages in human history. And fluency depends on recalling, memorization, the association of characters to meaning as well as pronunciation. Oh, my goodness. But on the good side of this is that at least it's graphical, which means it should be somewhat easy, you know, somewhat, you know, easier type to recall. Because a picture is worth what? A thousand words. So it should be in some way a little easier to see the picture and relate it to the meaning, okay? So hopefully that's what we'll find. Hopefully, cross our fingers. <laughs> Alrighty. Tongue placement, mouth shape, and the origin of the sound make up proper pronunciation. And and pinion is the necessary tool to learn this. For example, the English J sound is used in Mandarin. As used in Mandarin, has a similar sound represented by the Z H in pinion which was has both a different mouth shape and tongue placement and can completely change the meaning of a word. Man, I'm going to be cursing it out in Mandarin. I'm telling you right now. For example, when buying food, if you ask for Xiang, you are asking for ginger. Ginger, Xiang. If you're asking for Zhang, you're asking for an octopus. Oh, yeah, but I probably said Jiang for Zhang, right? Which I wouldn't know. Pinyin is also a necessary aid in knowing the correct tones of characters. Remember that variations in tones for the same sound can alter the meaning of a word. Here's a funny example. If you introduce your kizi, you are introducing your wife. If you introduce your kizi, I, I wouldn't know how to say the difference. If you have the I here with the uh, with that, I think it's uh, it's uh, cozy. 
I think it should be the short vowel, right? This is the I, the Kaizi. It's the long, Kaizi. So it should be Kaizi, right? If you introduce your Kaizi, you are introducing your wife. Okay, so, and if you introduce your Kazi, you're introducing your bottle opener. Now, for this one, then, Jiang, Jiang, you is ginger, if I'm using the A, the long A here. And if you say your Zhang, it has the same thing. Jiang, Jiang, and this is Zhang. Jane, you're asking for active. So it's just that slight G A G A and this is the J. So it's a very slight I sound there in you know that makes the difference between the ginger and the octopus in my estimation. And then here's an uh, the difference in the pronunciation actually. It says for the same sound, remember the variation in tone. And I, it's the Kaizi, and then here I would read it as the uh, Kuzi, not the Kaizi, but Kuzi. You're introducing a bottle open. Again, we'll, we'll find that out. <laughs> Pinyin is an important part of learning Chinese pronunciation, but it's the equivalent of training wheels on a bike. Remember that Chinese publication is written in characters, rarely with Pinyin. Thus, studying characters and recognizing them will help with reading. To help your learning, buy children's books from bookstores. So this is this is what we're going to go and look at also, children's books. Uh, so that's a hint to look for children's books. Let's look at it. Let's uh, look that into our resources, children's books, as part of uh, what we're going to use to learn these new languages. Um, it's a time check. We went over our hour, so we're going to end it soon. Let me just finish this. From bookstores and study those characters, then write them down on flashcards, shuffle them, because again, it's memorization. Read each character out loud. If they are translations of stories you remember from childhood, even better. Again, see if they are translations of stories you know. Why? Because you know them. This is my whole theory, or it should be a proven fact. That if you have knowledge of the of the material, the concept, <clears throat> or even in another language, then learning the new language, learning it in a new language would be easier than getting, like not knowing anything at all. You can also watch movies with subtitles so you can hear the spoken language while trying to identify the characters. You won't be able to identify many at the start, but with time, you'll recognize words, phrases, and eventually entire sentences and you're sure to feel elated with your study progress. It'll be interesting. I wonder if Netflix has a Mandarin Chinese should have it. And so I'm going to also, I guess, I watch a movie every day according to the language I pick, if I can find it, or some type of uh, channel online, and just to have the language and begin to hear those languages and identify the, the key Z and their koozie in each of them. Does that make sense to you? Just like when you learn to read your mother tongue, learning to read Chinese. Let me put that here, movies. It will take lots of practice and time. Dedication is important. Here's another learning tip. Whenever, wherever you see something written in characters, a business name, a newspaper headline, a restaurant menu, try to read it. When you come across a character you don't recognize, say... Uh, shenmen, shenmen, which means something in the context of reading and not uh, recognize the character and then keep reading the rest. Uh, remember these characters you, you couldn't identify. Take a quick photo of them if you have to. Then look them up when you have time. Eventually your shenmen count will go down and you'll be reading more and more fluently. Now, how did I know that this was shenmen here? Uh, because... I'm trying to tell you what I what my mind went through. Did it identify the shapes of the figures with the previous one? It could have. It did it so quickly that I didn't notice that it did it. But I, I can admit that maybe in an instant, the brain recognized the Shenmei instantly, okay? But what I felt was this has to be the Shenmei because... That's the subject. That's what we're talking about, right? Eventually, your shen, I said, 
the Shenmei count. I didn't see the count, but so that's why I'm saying that the the, the the characters that you see here in Mandarin Chinese it sparked a recall instantly from before, but it it wasn't conscious. In other words, I didn't say, "Oh, this looks like that." I didn't say that. I didn't think it. But I have to admit that for a split second, that may have indeed be what happened. Okay, and then. I just used my reason. It's the only character that was recently. We were talking about a character. It just showed a character, and right now it just throws a character at you. I said it must be the Shen, and that's basically how I thought it. Okay, but I, there was enough of a split second where it could have my brain could have un, uh, subconsciously made the. Connection of recall with the other thing, so it's interesting to see how your brain works. This is, you know, by doing these exercises. The reason why we're doing these exercises is that you begin to see in me, and I'm looking at and observing and making my observations. See how your brain is functioning. It also helps your brain to function, because while we're doing this, you're exercising your brain muscles, so to speak. So your 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 brain is being used at its at, at its maximum abilities at whatever time it is to handle information. And this is how you see it, and this is how you keep practicing. If you live your life, and with this I'll end today's uh, program. If you live your life without challenging your brain, to do what it was created for, if you believe in evolution, that it evolved into. I mean, imagine living your life not using your brain, that it evolved. This use evolution because evolution is the greatest insult to humanity there ever is. Because here you have a brain that can do so, so, so much... Yet most human beings waste their brain. Waste it. I don't know where you get your evolutionary process from. <laughs> you know, that theory, you know, I, evolution talks toward everything, like developing in your body, your, physiolog your the, the physiological uh, point of view and, and elements of your physiology. But when it comes to cognitive development, evolution it falls short because at this point, all of y'all, all of you can learn vast amounts of things and skills and all of that. And the fact is that most of you are wasting this evolutionary product away. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. That the brain is a product of evolution when so many, the majority, the vast majority of people waste their brain. It goes wasted. How, how is that evolutionary? The brain has much more than what most of you are using it for. The brain, if there's anything that's counter-evolution for its origination, it's the brain. <laughs> Because the brain, like, it can do vast amounts of more productivity and more thinking and reason than what most human beings are using it or even knowing that they can use it for that. I'm just saying, it just doesn't make any sense. Most of you out there are smarter than you know and that you, and that you realize. It's just simply... You're not making the right choices on what to do from moment to moment. Um, we, we're too social, and so we want to have social engagements. To, uh, and everything's about worth, your, your self-worth, what you see about yourself, what you feel about yourself, what you value. And since you are more social, let's say, you, you are more, uh, you found yourself as a child, because these things are formed as children. 
where are you strong at? Are you strong at being social? And you had friends, you had a lot of friends, you know, you you guy, you know, guy or gal with a lot of friends around and that so so you begin to identify and your value, your self worth with that. And uh, and so and and basically your brain is a hostage. Your brain is your slave. Everyone's brain is their own slave. And it's a hostage to whatever you develop in your life as being important and being valued. And your brain conforms to that. So it actually commits seppuku. You know what seppuku is? Seppuku is killing, is suicide. So your brain begins to kill itself off, the cells in it. Uh, just about after 12 and, and onward, your brain begins to conform to what you know. And that's that. So you lose most of your capacity uh, by the time you reach adulthood. And even before that, or through your teenage years, you're really burning off your potentials. Um, not that you can't develop your neural pathways, you can develop, but if you, if you, if you do not break out of that eggshell of whatever it is you, you identified with as a young uh, child, uh, you will not progress too far from that eggshell and you'll be mentally, cognitively pretty much shaped from what you started out as being. And uh, that is Bu Hen Hao. That is Bu Hen Hao. Okay. So, which means that it is not very good. Okay. So, you have to make a kind as an adult. And before you get too old, you really have to make an effort. You know, you feel like you're over here taking it easy, having fun, playing your video games, watching TV, whatever. It is. You have to make a great effort to shift over and begin doing things that uh, enrich the mind and then cause the mind to exercise it's like doing it say i need to get out i have to get out and do that go back to work and couldn't do it i had that accident i started falling down losing my my balance i injured my knee i injured then my uh, my foot and my toes and i had to stop i i i was had a regimen of uh walking and running Pretty good. I was doing great exercise. I started to lose uh, the weight. But then that accident happened. And then the other ones, uh, when I started falling. And so I had to stop all that. And I gained that tummy right back and more, I guess, into my, my view. <clears throat> uh, so I need to, you know, I'm, I, I'm at the point we just uh, moved our offices and we started getting situated. So I'm, I'm trying to use this this environmental change and uh, and this movement to to foster again to restart my exercise program you know physical exercise to start getting out there plus the fact that now we have a a gym that you know since i'm in this uh in this complex i have the free use of a full gym uh, and great. So now I can have gym, although I'm not too much of a gym person, I'm going to start with my walking and then adding the running and, and I start growing in that aspect before I even go into the gym. But that's what I want to do. And I'm using this as a catalyst to jumpstart into that. So that's, that's coming. Um, but also just like I, I'm talking about doing that for your physical body, and a lot of you do physical things. Um, you should also be doing mental things. 
instead of being crazy over that. <laughs> you have to do a mental exercise. So I think that's healthy, just as healthy as your physical health and physical exercise. You should be doing mental exercise. So this is the reason that I'm I'm doing this, even not for myself, because hey, look, I know a lot, or you know, I know a lot of things, and I keep doing my software and coding, and uh, that's another language, and uh, you know, I listen to my Bach, and I'm, uh, and, but the, but I'm trying to add more to what I know and and get into more, uh, and at the same time, I want to help others uh, and develop these. Uh, at least this, it's not a course. These are not courses, obviously. But these are opportunities for people to, you know, learn a new word, learn something. Do so, start using your mind in a different way and to tax it uh, more than usual in your day-to-day -day, uh, activities or non-activity. And, uh, and that way you can be healthier mentally. The other thing is that a lot of you are going or facing Alzheimer's in the future, or you know people in your family who have suffered Alzheimer's or dementia or any other mental degradation, cognitive degradation. You lose your memory over time, lots of different things. Doing this type of exercise, picking up new languages, just starting just even an hour. We're doing just an hour every night. And just just doing something, just looking at something, just even doing this research to get ready to do something. It's it's all of this is great mental exercise. And as you saw how I did, I I matched things up one with the other. That was that was Hen Hao, right? Very good. Putting things together. I even talked a little bit of politics and foreign affairs. We talked a little bit about history. What you're going to do more next week, uh, we're going to track this. I'm interested in this as part of learning the language here, Mandarin Chinese. We're going to look at the development of the Chinese language and the politics of China. And we're, going to, we're going to look for similarities and learn some more Chinese. And that's what we're going to do. This is the things that interest me and put my mind, keep my mind busy, looking, researching, adding. To a knowledge base and it should help any one of you also to add something extra to your day so hopefully you guys could share this and subscribe and and i'm not trying to make a youtube channel that i'm telling you guys subscribe subscribe no 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 i'm, I'm listen i'm not even interested in youtube monetization or anything um I'm not even going to sell you anything here. Right now, we just focused. We showed you this website. I promoted that website and its course. It had a course that I showed it to you. So I'm not interested. There's no money that is in here. I'm not interested in anything. All I'm doing is providing something for you guys and whatever platform you're at to help you um, postpone. Because I can't say we're going to prevent Alzheimer's or any other cognitive degradation. But at least I can say this with surety that we're postponing it. We're, we're doing something in contrary motion to uh, a possible degradative um, uh, occurrence in your, in your life, in your mind. And uh, by joining me and sharing this with others also, uh, this is great for people who are middle age uh, obviously that uh, you guys there will be concerns about uh, mental degradation cognitive de degradation etc they need to be joining me and just have fun with this it's just a, it's not a course it's not any psychotherapy or anything like that it's really what is it what is a social cognitive therapy uh, group therapy we come together and we look in a, a different language every night, and uh, you know, make our make our brain think a little bit. Okay, raise your hands, raise your hand. Okay, a little higher. That's all. That's all we're doing here. Nothing big, nothing fancy, but we have to get moving. We have to get ourselves moving, little by little by little. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.
Uh, I don't know when we'll be back to our regular schedule. It probably won't be this week at all with any of our, our regular videos. Uh, most probably next week, more likely. We'll see. But uh, I wouldn't be just expecting anything it's regular until February. And again, we won't do our Sunday teachings or Sabbath until um, March. That's when we're going to start up. Okay. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching. And next time we come in next Monday. Tomorrow night I'll be on again, hopefully. Uh, tomorrow night we're doing... What language we're doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we are going to be doing Arabic. Oh, my goodness. Another one. So we're going to get into some Arabic tomorrow. We're going to start talking about that tomorrow. And... Next week, Monday, was Mandarin Chinese again. We're going to look into the historical development of the language for next time. Okay, so thanks for watching, and see you next time.